Hey friends, welcome to this week's video. I hope you've been enjoying the earbud content because we have plenty more coming up and this week we are going over a company or an earbud from a company called Nura. And if you're familiar with my channel, you've probably seen me go over plenty of earbuds from them or earbuds and headphones. I went over their Nura phones, their Nura loops in quite depth. So if you want to check out those reviews, definitely go poured off to those videos. I'll leave links to them as well. But they are an Australian company that has a differentiator in how they process sort of the EQ based off of the sound of or the shape of your ear. And over the years, I've been really digging them just because they let you play around with the sound a little bit more and they do provide a little bit different punch than I've seen in other earbuds. So it's something that I wanted to revisit because they did come out with their new Neurotrues. And these guys, are sort of the upgrade from their Neura Buds. The Neura Buds I will not be doing just because that battery life and some of the specs there are not something that I align with. However, these ones punch out a little bit better and kind of are a compelling offering when you start looking at things that are sort of sub 250, even sub 300 at some points. So we'll definitely get into that. So let's check out the specs and see what we like about these Neurotrues. The Neurotrues have a simple packaging and provides you with the basics of the main device, ear tips, and charging cable. They also come in four sizes of silicon tips, one size of foam tips, as well as a set of wings and a set of canal hooks for security when wearing. While I tested both styles of tips, most of this review will be performed with the foam, so keep that in mind as we keep talking. Neuro went with a very simplistic matte black aesthetic, which is akin to their other products, and it fits somewhere between their Neuro Buds offering and their Neuro Loop offering. They have better performance and battery than the buds, but are not as feature heavy as the loops. But we'll get into that comparison in a later review. For now, let's dive into the case. The case is going to land you around 18 hours for additional charges. It charges via USB-C, but I didn't notice anything special from a quick charge perspective. It takes over two hours to top this guy up and it charges pretty linearly. The lid gives you access to the buds and has a relatively strong magnet to keep the lid closed. There's also a rubberized interior to help the buds with security when in pocket. The front LEDs indicate the case battery in 25% increments. Unfortunately, there are no indicators for the individual earbuds. Since we're already on the earbuds topic, let's talk about how they're controlled by large and circular panels that fit more outside your ear than in. You get about six hours per charge and through my use, I found that this is pretty accurate overall. The earbuds come equipped with an interior mic to help with audio tuning with their auto acoustics and their external mic helps with calls and ambient noise modes. You'll have a choice of tips and wings, but we'll get more into that as we go into fit later in this review. So back to A-Roll so we can talk about this case and the earbuds inside of them. But there's not that much special about this case. It is just a plain matte black plastic package that is not rubberized, not ruggedized. So there's nothing to improve the in-hand feel or durability of the case, but you know, it does a pretty good job. The case on top is, or the lid on top is quite strong it doesn't it won't fly open or make you lose your earbuds but uh yeah in terms of sizing i would say that it's very akin to the xm4s uh definitely a little bit bigger than the mw08s and yeah it's, it has a smaller footprint overall than the bowers and wilkins offerings in terms of battery it's very mid-range it's 18 hours pretty good um and i've seen that's pretty accurate from what i've seen there's no wireless charging unfortunately but uh not everyone needs that USB-C is good for me, but if wireless charging is on your top of priority, you might not like this. However, as we move inside the case, you'll see that the earbuds are going to give you about six hours. And I found that to be pretty accurate. I got about, I got ranging from 5.45 to 6 to 6.10. So it's in that range. I would say that it's rated quite accurately. So to me, that's a pretty good rating when I see it compared to other headphones. Obviously, things like the MW08s are going to way out punch it. But in terms of like overall, 6 is commendable and definitely usable for every day. Um, in terms of the earbuds themselves, they do come with uh, 
foam tips, which is great. And obviously there are silicone tips as well. But if you've seen what I've been doing recently, I've been leaning towards foam tips just because of better security and isolation. So I, I did most of this review with that. Um, they also come in with tips and wings, which is cool. Um, and we'll get more into that in the fit part of the review, but I do like that they've given you all those accessories so that you can get a better fit and customization to your ears. The one thing that I found was really funny about these ones is that they do have sort of generic shapings. Um, I mean, it definitely tries to fit towards your ear, but I think in terms of the moldings in the case, you notice that they have those two pins on the top, right? And that's how they get stuck in. Um, and on these ones, they're just very round and generic. Whoop. So I could technically fit these in the wrong way. So let's do that. And let's do that. So if you looked at these, it looks like they fit inside the case, right? Outside not closing completely, but they fit in completely in there. So they're not as quite like custom molded to, to one shape as it is with some of the competitors. And I think that's the reason why some of this happens. So I did talk about the case staying closed, but if you just take this out and you do this, it's not a very strong magnet. And I think that's just because of the design and you have to kind of think about where those contact points are so that it does charge. But overall, the earbuds are pretty cool. I think we should probably get into the fit and the function uh, because I think that's what's gonna be more important here than them stay inside the case. As I mentioned, Neuro gives you a solid selection of tips, wings, and hooks to help you get the right fit for you. Before this review, I'm focusing on the foam tips as they were the most comfy for me. While the controls do take up some real estate when looking from the side, looking head on, they do not protrude that much and blend quite well with the silhouette of your head, better than most earbuds out there. While they are lightweight, they don't feel weightless and are present in your ear when you wear them. As we look at my right ear, I've added the canal hooks as a security measure. The hook fits right where your ear curls up. While these were effective in holding things in place, I will say that it made the earbuds more noticeable while wearing. Personally, it was a little bit finicky feeling and it wasn't to my preference. Now moving on to my left ear, I added the mini wing as the security measure. For me, these fit significantly better and more flush and secure. The wings added a little girth to the bud and it pressed against the inside of my ear that to fill that gap for security. These are definitely my go-to fit and serve me well when working out. Let's move on to active fit and get onto the field. After finding my tip and wing combo, these headphones fit like a dream and held up extremely well outdoors while running. Jumping, change of directions and sprints, nothing really phased the fit of these and even as temperatures rose and I started sweating more, they didn't come loose or require much readjustment. Responsive controls meant I didn't have to press hard into my ears like other earbuds, and I didn't feel much sway from the headphones due to their close ear fit. There was very minimal stethoscope effects even when planting hard which prevented me from getting distracted from my workout. So I can say that you won't have any problems running errands or agility drills in these. As always, while we're in the field, we'll test Bluetooth range. It's rated at 15 meters, which is about 50 feet, which is kind of subpar when you look at it on paper, especially when Master Dynamics and Bauer and Wilkins are promising over 90 feet. However, I'm not sure who did that test at Neura because these things go way beyond 50 feet in an open field. In fact, I had to speed up this section because I was walking back so far and still not losing connection with my music. Like, what is going on here? This is straight baffling. Let's cut to my live measure of how far the signal stayed true. Yo, so this is about you know, seven yard line. I'll take a little jog. Because what is happening? Why is it so far away? So I got to that blue line up there. So this blue line is equivalent to the 20. 80 yards-ish. Wow. Only well, 73. Whatever. Close. That's a lot. Wow. Okay. I'm definitely not throwing that far. <laughs> With the little field trip done, let's move into the microphone performance. Uh, 
there's a train arriving, but I wanted to get a recording of what it sounds like with a bunch of noise in the background. I do have mask on, so I might not come in clearly, but with all these interferences, hope you guys get a good understanding of ambient sounds, and if you are running around the city, and have a bunch of things going on, what do you sound like to your audience over from the But yeah, um, I don't know how this sounds, I have no idea. And that's what the comments are for. You can keep me up to date to make sure that I get a good sense of what this sounds like. But as this thing leaves, in 3, 2, 1, let's talk about how this sounds when I am home and clean my room to get a clean recording. Alright. So I kind of want to get another recording without the mask just because I feel like that did kind of encumber the recording of it. But I'm going to be walking to a coffee shop real quick and get an understanding of what this sounds with a more clear voice without any encumbrance. Obviously no train in the background, but still plenty of city noise. Um, so let me know how this sounds. All right, so a little bit more microphone testing than I was used to. Again, the mask kind of got in the way of the recording a bit, so I may want to make sure that I got a clear audio without the mask. So as you could hear from even the subway station, I still was able to come through with all that noise on. I believe if I didn't have my mask on, you'd still be able to hear me quite clearly, despite the subway noise and everything around me. However, when you, I took the mask off and I was outside of the train station, you definitely could hear me pretty clearly. It didn't matter if people were walking by me, if there was whooshing of cars. I definitely was discernible against all of that background noise. So I don't think that you have any issues if you're taking calls on the go. People are still going to be able to take your voice out and hear what you're trying to say. But um, you guys are going to have to tell me how I sound indoors in a quiet setting. Again, I'm, in, I'm back in my room. There is a window open, but nothing major that's going to you know, really get in the way here. So you can tell me how I would sound in a quiet studio, but from what I've gotten input from my clients, I generally come in pretty clear. Not necessarily natural. There were times I came in robotic. However, I was able to be very clear, loud enough for everyone to hear, and there was no sort of mixing of my words based off the microphones. So I will say that probably the PI7s and the MD MW08 Sports probably have a little bit better microphones in terms of bringing in more natural sound of what your voice would sound like. However, you're still going to have more clarity than something like the Sony XM4s, which have absolutely trash microphones, and no one will be able to hear you. So... You know, you may sacrifice some of the natural qualities. However, you'll still get uh, amazing, you know, sound. People will be able to hear you. So you won't have any issue getting lost in the sauce or in the static of the call. You'll still be able to be well heard by your audience. So I think you'll appreciate that regardless. Anyway, we've done a lot more microphone testing than I'm used to. So let's move over to ANC and ambient noise and see how those perform. Ambient noise mode, which NeuroDub's social mode, gives you the gradient control that allows you to swing between social mode and ANC, as well as anywhere in between. While there's no voice emphasis mode, the ability to dial in how much you let of your surroundings in compensates for that. ANC and social modes can be programmed for easy toggling via touch controls in the app. Social mode works quite well in terms of bringing in noise, but also assists this by knocking down your music level about 40% if you have 100% social mode on. I found it pleasant overall, but I will say it doesn't have the same level of superhuman hearing as you see on the neural loops of the neural phones. Moving on to ANC, it does solid with drawing out lows of motors and mids of voices. However, high pitched noises like sirens, milk frothers, and screeching brakes will still come through. I mean, I could hear this guy dribbling in the background here with ANC on. It's definitely not something that I noticed with the neural loops or neural phones, so it's definitely not at that level. But I will say that with music on, those higher pitch noises definitely get reduced, but I'd still call these second tier to Sony when it comes to ANC.
Adam Payton, man. That's crazy. Look at this. you imagine? I'm gonna be frank here, sound is gonna be really hard to talk about for these headphones because they have a customized EQ using their auto acoustic technology, the ability to boost your thump using their immersion technology, and you can even set everything to flat if you wanna shut everything off, so really no two preferences will be the same. If you wanna know more about Nura's sound modification features, check out my Nura phone review. However, I will say that they are pretty solid for a $200 set of headphones. They are warmer and boosted in the bass for sure, but nothing that is really overpowering unless you crank immersion all the way up. It punches hard while keeping vocals clear and is great for any visual or interactive media as well. You're not gonna get a neutral, accurate, and high resolution sound like you would out of the PI7s, but you will get a personal EQ that will work across multiple genres and provide a solid balance and clarity that outpunches things like the Sony XM4s and even bat with the PI5s. I'll be definitely squaring these off with the neural loops in the future, but enough of me trying to explain how this sounds, and why don't you listen to my sound profile for yourself. Finally wrapping up with the controls and application, the application is where all the magic happens for these headphones. This is where you set up your sound profile, you set your immersion level, and choose your noise modes. The startup is a bit slow, but once you're connected it responds quickly. The app also gives you the ability to choose your auto-pause behavior as well as remap your gesture buttons. The Nerd Trues are equipped with a single tap and double tap gesture on each earbud allowing you to program four controls in all. 
These can include playback features, call features, volume rocking, noise mode toggling, voice assistance, and immersion toggling. While you have a plethora of options for control, you only have four gestures, forcing you to make some tough decisions. For me, I put play, pause, phone answer, and social toggling on the left side, and on the right side, I put the next track and previous track. Yet I'm constantly missing the ability to adjust the volume with the setup. The neural loops solved this by providing a wonderful dial gesture, but unfortunately the trues do not have that, nor do they have the proper touchpad to accommodate that in a firmware update. However, Neura can introduce a hold and triple tap gesture, much like the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 2s, to allow us to have more controls of our phone through the Neura True earbuds. Overall, the app is relatively useful for the specific features related to Neura's offering. However, I do think it could benefit from faster boot times, more EQ control, and gesture expansion. Let's see if Neura listens to us, but in the meantime, let me give you my final thoughts. <sighs> so the Neura Trues. Are they worth it? I think so. I think they're they're good for most people. I think at the two hundred dollar price range, they swing up to things like the XM fours at two seventy, and you could even say, from a controls perspective and things, even like three hundred dollars if you're looking at like the PI fives or something like that. Um, these sound better and they fit better than a lot of those things. Um, from a sound perspective, obviously this is going to be different from person to person. I really appreciate having that sort of tuned auto acoustic signature in there just because it's it brings a lot of impact to the music. Like it really immerses you, it really punches you, and it, it, it feels very full. Again, they do have a neutral setting, so if you don't want to have sort of that embellished signature, you can bring it back. I will say that the neutral signature on these are quite emaciated, to me at least. Like again, like I get more clarity and a little bit more, a little more oomph out of this, the, the neutral signatures from like the True Wireless 2s or the PI7s. And obviously those are just like a little bit more superior in terms of their capabilities of what they can render, but these still do pretty well. And again, the auto acoustics are great. I do wish that they would let us play around with that sort of circle of auto acoustics that they've rendered as a template for you. Just because as if you've seen my Neura phone review, I kind of liked some of my friends' like settings more than mine um, for certain songs and things like that. Um, so we did a few, uh, pretty interesting experiment on that review. And you know, sometimes I like my friend Yewan, sometimes I like Carter's, and it was good to have sort of that flexibility to switch between them. But obviously, unless you're just throwing this in all your friends' ears and getting a bunch of templates to play from, you don't have the ability to adjust that. So it would be cool to have that. Another thing that I would say that they could improve on is probably controls. Obviously, you have single tap, double taps, great. They are very responsive, Not nothing to complain there. But I do wish they would bring in a hold or a triple tap because I think that will help us add uh, certain playback features. It'll help us add volume controls and stuff like that because they don't have that same sort of uh, scroll function that they do on the neural loops. There need to be some sort of way to control that without you know, removing me from using playback features or ANC features. Um, so I think that's something that you should uh, keep in mind, something that they could definitely fix with firmware. Um, so Neuro, if you're listening, please do that. Um, another thing here is obviously your ambient and ANC modes are pretty solid. Um, your ANC is not going to be on the range of your True Wireless 2s or your Sony XM4s or Apples. Like those are just kind of way better. But like a lot of those headphones are like, again, like those outpunch the MW08s and like, so like Sony and stuff is doing great on the ANC. So if you're an ANC junkie, these might not fit you. But when I was listening to music and going around the city with ANC on, I really couldn't hear much. Again, high pitched noises come through sometimes, but that's a common thing with most of these headphones. So ANC is beyond usable, definitely commendable. Um, nothing complained there, but I think the biggest, the biggest thing that they need to fix on these headphones is volume. So let's throw a little bit of edit in here. And that's because Neura has updated the Neura Trues with a firmware update. And why that's important is because they fixed the biggest issue that I had with them, and that was volume. Prior to the update, these earbuds were hitting about 80% volume of what other earbuds were achieving, and they were a little bit quiet. So if you were listening to quiet podcasts or someone who spoke quieter or, you know, music that was a little bit quiet, you may not be able to hear it perfectly, or you may be desiring that extra volume, and that wasn't there. So... 
they fixed it. And like I mentioned in the beginning of this review, Nur is extremely good about listening to customers' needs, what features they want, what they see as deficiencies in the product, and do all they can to resolve it. And I think that's the reason why this was a big thing, because a lot of people were complaining about it, and they made it a priority on their development list to bring it forward. So when I updated it, I saw this message about how volume was being improved, but it wasn't just tuning it up, it was a few different things. So let's talk about that. So the standard tuning is now on par with what you would expect from an earbud, and I never was really craving more volume. However, they wanted to make sure that we will not complain about volume ever again, apparently, because in the settings, they've also allowed us to do a couple things that will allow it to go further. So one, we can remove the limiter and, you know, so the limiter is there to make sure that everything sounds good throughout the volume range. Nothing gets distorted. The quality is retained and all that sort of stuff. Also protect your earring. However, now we can remove that. So, you know, if you want to be like Saitama, break your limiters and punch through the sky with this volume, you can. On top of that, they've also added a booster that'll pump it up even louder. So again, I don't think everybody's gonna need this, but maybe if you're hearing impaired or you're listening to a lot of quiet recordings, you need to activate it temporarily. I think this would be good. Some people tell me that I'm a little bit deaf and that when I complain about volume, it's actually plenty fine for them. But even for me, this was a lot. This is a lot, but I think that I need to, give you a warning that when you activate this, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that you maintain that quality, that there will be no distortion and that it'll, it'll be safe for your ears. They actually give you that warning that like, be careful when using this mode. I think that it's something that you guys should definitely test before you understand if you need it and do it very carefully because you don't want to damage your ears. And you know, obviously we want good sound quality in the end of the day, but to help you along with that to see if you will need this and so like only I damage my ears if that comes to the case I am going to put in samples of this the different modes so that you can understand so the first part of this section will be sort of the volume gamut as it moves in standard mode just with the updated tuning and then the second one will be with the limiter off and the booster on so that you can see how much more volume you get at it with those modes and hopefully you understand if you will need to activate this or not but Again, improvements from Neura, I love to see it, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We will be doing another video on these that kind of punch against the Neura loops. And I know a lot of you guys have had questions on the Neura loops and how these compare to the Neura Trues. And I'm definitely gonna do that video next. So I will be putting sound next to each other, features next to each other, the whole sort of stuff that you guys are used to my comparisons. So stay tuned for that. Um, some of you guys have asked if I'm gonna do the Neuro Buds and I'm probably not going to just because I don't like some of those specs that they have on that four hour battery life. I just don't, that's not usable for me. Um, it's just because uh, generally if I start using it on phones, it's gonna be lower than that. So I think the PI7 is kind of just killed that whole like four hour vibe to me. So if you're not hitting above five hours, I'm probably not gonna f with you. <laughs> so sorry, like unless like, I'm getting a, a huge amount of love to get try the ear, uh, neuro earbuds, I probably won't. The neuro trues are probably what I would recommend anyway over them just because of superior.
most things. Um, but yeah, there will be other some ear, some of the ear tips or earbuds coming up for uh, in the future. Some people have recommended, but if you guys have other things, whether they be budget, whether they be premium, I kind of got a good mix of both. I will be shooting videos and trying to get corral a bunch of uh, options together as long as I can return them. If I can, I'm not. Um, but yeah, the first, the next video first is going to be the Neuroloops versus Neurotrues. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, I thank you guys so much for liking, subscribing, commenting, doing all the things that you normally do on a video that you like and love. All the people that are returning and, and how you guys have been continually engaging and, you know, I've hit the thousand, but I, I still see this massive growth. So I, I love the fact that that's continuing and we're getting a really engaged audience. So thank you guys so much. I am trying to figure out what I need to do for that thousand, but I think a lot of the requests coming through are probably gonna take precedent over that. So I definitely appreciate you guys getting me to that milestone and I'm gonna shoot something that will do that. I just have to think about what would actually be impactful and actually be worth it. But I also don't wanna lose track of all of you guys' requests, like the B&O EQs and, you know, Falcon Pros and, I don't know, the clear audio. I don't know, I have a huge list of stuff that you guys recommended. So I do wanna make sure I get to those earbuds, just especially if you guys are looking to purchase something for the holiday season. I wanna get as much as I can in before the end of October so that you guys can, you know, have a lot of options to consider and I can give you perspectives to help you make a better buying decision. Um, but yeah, those are coming, thousand coming. Thank you guys so much. And as always, appreciate you. Peace.